This is the voice of the report of the week. Signing on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The time this is being recorded at is Tuesday, July 15th, 2014. And the time is 1.45 a.m. So how are we all doing today? Whenever that may be. Might put this up Wednesday or maybe even Thursday, 16th or 17th. Whenever this is put it up, though, uh, uploaded, I guess that's a term for it. Hope you are all well. Hope you had a good day, maybe a productive one. If not, I still hope your day was good. If it wasn't, it'll get better. Trust me on that one. My day today, at least, it's saying how. Whenever my Monday, I guess, because I've been up you know, since Monday. Though it's early on a Tuesday. I'm getting my water. My show's glass of water. So I like to drink water. But anyway, my day was uh, unproductive to say the least. I woke up at 3, a little past uh, 3 p.m., maybe 3.15. And I was getting ready to go back to sleep, but uh, I said, nah, it's, it's late enough already. I usually don't start going to sleep at f until... I usually don't end up waking up at 5 until later on. But I crawled out of bed and started the day. What did we do? We uh, listened to uh, Radio Kuwait on the shortwave for two hours. And they actually run a pretty decent English service. Uh, they play a lot of music, and they certainly do. It's modern music, too. It's uh, top 40, pretty much. And... Uh, they also have decent you know, talk programs, I find good, but uh, listen to them, then uh, from 5 to 6, I uh, pretty much looked at some vacation photos of uh, our trip to Hawaii, I haven't seen them yet, and uh, there were about a thousand of them to look at, so you hooked it up to a laptop and then hooked that up to the TV and we uh, we saw them all. I'm gonna get them on a flash drive and then maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll show a picture of me or something on on the VORW next time. Who knows? Maybe. You never know. There's a possibility that does exist of that happening. After that, I had some chicken for dinner. It was actually homemade, so... Yeah. You thought I didn't eat homemade meals, but I did. It was, uh, it was actually pretty good. And, uh... And after that, I did an energy drink a few. Which I don't know if that's up yet. This is talking a few days in advance now. But, uh, I tried G-Shot, as it's known, and, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, we'll just see how it was, right? Yeah, and then time slipped away, I guess. I don't know what I've been doing on the computer. Going on various sites, forums, all that stuff. And, but, here we are now. So, uh, what's the plan for today's show? Well, it could go maybe two ways. I can... Well, first off, I'm going to read fan mail. Alright. Read and respond to fan mail. And, uh, then... I could go one of two ways. I could keep going, uh... On about, you know, the channel's history from, uh... Probably mid-2012 to early... 2013, where a lot of stuff goes down. Or, or... Uh, I can read you a, uh, Story that I wrote in, uh, Hawaii... It's very fictionalized, but, uh, it's about this one thing called the Hana Road. It's this, uh, rural road, uh, about 20 miles in length that goes along the coast and through different environments and stuff, and it's supposed to be scenic, but, uh, I had a terrible experience on it. I was, it has about six, 600 turns in the space of 10 miles, hairpin turns and, uh, Felt sick to my stomach, and I had a very bad experience with it. Uh, so I felt compelled to write a story about it, and it's heavily fictionalized. But I had a good, a good time and a few laughs while I was writing it. And I might read that also, but we'll just we'll see which one I decide to do. Eventually, both will get covered. But uh, whatever, I'm just feeling after I read the fan mail, I'll do. Okay. Okay. Let's read some fan mail. 
how about we listen to some Oasis while we're at it? Who cares if this, if they try to say it's copyrighted or whatever, let them. Um, how about, listen up, that's a good song of theirs. Did you know that Oasis is one of my favorite groups? For me it is, but uh, listen up, that's a good song of theirs, I highly recommend it. So yeah, this is just for me, but if you hear it, it's... Anyway, let's read some fan mail. See where we are. Um, where were we? Where did we finish off with the fan mail last time? All right, here we go. Just wanted to say that I really enjoy your videos. You've created something very unique. It is informative, humorous, and it is yours. You own it, man. I think it's great. Keep it up. I teach high school age students, and you're showing something that many of them lack. The ability to own something unique and make it their own. Good classy, sir. Your admirer, Joe. Thank you, Joe. You know, I really do appreciate your support there. And, uh, thank you for your kind words. Hello, review bra. Big fan. I enjoy your typical day videos. And I was just wondering, could you... A typical day video while walling around in public instead of inside your house all the time? Perhaps shopping for energy drinks, interacting with the locals, flirting with girls, etc.? I'm sure I could think of something like that. Good luck and I hope you enjoy your vacation. Alright, anyway. So it's the favorite song of mine. Uh, well, no, I'm not going to do that. I could only imagine what an idiot I'd look like walking around with a camera like that in public. And uh, I really don't want to cause a scene. Uh, and I really don't want to att attract any more attention to myself than I already do with my attire. Uh, you know, so... Anyway, like I mean, I've I've thought about like if I went to the mall or something, but you got to remember where I am. I'm in New York, so chances are if I went around with a camera and tried talking to people, they would just say, "Get that effing camera out of my face" or something like that. And so that's not gonna happen. Hey man, great videos. I just gotta ask, how come commenting is disabled? New subscriber here. Commenting is disabled to for two reasons to because most of the time it's just hate I know it might seem the other way around if all the fan mail I get here but it's mostly hate uh, it is and it's also to prevent myself from seeing that and uh, you know, that's about it I don't want to end up starting off every day reading that and getting upset or mad every single day figure let them say what they want but they don't have but they don't say it here Hey, you're my favorite subscribe, uh, favorite YouTuber, and I know you're amazing with style. In one of your videos, you said you couldn't pull off a fedora. I say, to heck with that. You pulled off that fedora just fine, and you should wear one during the entirety of a video. My friends agree with this. Many blessings to you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, the fedora is an interesting hat. But, uh, I appreciate you saying I could pull it off. I don't know if I said this, but while I was in Hawaii, I actually wore a Panama hat. Uh, almost every single time I was outside, mostly to keep the sun off of my face. But it, it did work well with a, a shirt and tie. So I might show you that. I mean, it's a decent hat, and uh, similar to a fedora. But, uh, I thought that looked alright. Regarding your Pizza Hut Cheesy Bites Pizza review, oh, the che Cheesy Bites Pizza is awesome. And a question. Fox clearly says Wing Street, and you say you got some Wing Boulevard chicken bites. I love your sense of humor. Now, my question. I was wondering if you collect anything. If so, could you consider doing a video about your collection? Your videos about your shortwave hobby were interesting, so I imagine a collector's corner type of video would be interesting as well. 
Keep up the good work, and be sure to ignore the haters. Your fan, Phil. Thank you for your comment. Uh, do I collect things? Well, I guess it depends on, on really, you know, what you consider collecting. I'm sure I got something somewhere where I could show you, easily. Uh, so we'll see. You know, I'm starting to do more random videos. You saw that one of that uh, one station I picked up of that over-the-top uh, preacher, right? You saw that one, right? So, uh, you know, that's an example of uh, at least one of them. You know, one type of video that I could do for you there. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll have to see, but, uh, you, know, you never know. Did you know, by the way, did you know, by the way, you know that video that I did of the uh, crazy screaming preacher on the shortwave? I actually did a video of him earlier and I just never uploaded it. And he was even more exuberant than, uh, than the one I showed. Yeah, I have it right here. This is off the camera, so I don't know if the audio is the best, but let me just show it to you briefly the first uh, few seconds, okay? But yeah, uh, so that was actually I did another video of that, but I didn't upload it. I did one uh, more recent, but I actually got a real big kick out of that because his screaming was agitating the Blue Jays, the birds. So I got something out of that. Anyway, I'm really loving your vids, man. Peace from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you. Dear Report of the Week. Just saw your latest VORW, and I'm really happy to hear you go. Uh, you went on a nice vacation to Hawaii. You must be a very wealthy man to go on such a wonderful trip. I'm in the process of buying a house, and perhaps you could give me some financial advice. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know that you are awesome. You have a great day. Sincerely, Nick. I mean, really, when it comes to money, okay, when it comes to money, it's all about saving your money. Now, this may sound idiotic, but here's a, just a very small tip. And most of these tips are just, you know, self-explanatory. You know, they're, it's common sense type of stuff. But many people just completely ignore or forget common sense when it comes to money. Avoid frivolous spending, you know. Save your money for something that's good, you know, for something that'll actually get you somewhere. Uh... For something that you truly enjoy, you know? Don't be frivolous with your spending. Before you buy something, think, well, do I really need it? If I don't get it, will my life be ruined? If the answer to that is no, well, then reconsider your uh, decision. Well, if it's yes, all right, well, obviously, yeah, then go get it, but just think before you buy. So many people just buy things on the spot. And then before they know it, they're flat broke and wondering where all their money, ma uh, money went. And just don't be frivolous with your spending. And if you do that, you save your money. Before you know it, you'll have enough money to, you know, whatever, enjoy yourself at least. What do you base tipping on for takeout and sit-down? Food service? Mannerism of the waiter or the delivery driver? Cleanliness of uniform and establishment? What is the most you've tipped and the least you've tipped before? The most I've tipped was 100% on a $10 burger meal at a sit-down mom-and-pop shop. The patty was perfect, the bun toasted just right, toppings held together, and overall presentation was perfect. Fries are thick wedges with skin very crispy, which has become something I seek out now. I chose to pay $20 because it was sure as hell beat out the $20 I paid at one of those premium-style burger places a couple months ago. I figured this is what it should have been. Let least I've tipped was zero dollars since everything I consider for a tip was a regrettable experience. Sincerely, 
Sean from Canada. I always try to tip something, unless the person was just downright, you know, rude. Let's listen to another Oasis song. Here's Morning Glory. Recommend that one as well. Great guitar work on it. Tipping is an interesting thing. I like to base it on both, mostly on service. Uh, mostly on service. I know some people say, "Oh, I don't, I don't tip because, uh, you know, it's only going to the waiter, or the waitress, or whatever." But I think of the server. I'll say that instead of having to say waiter and waitress over and over again. The server. Uh, if the server did a good job, then he or she deserves a tip, you know? Even if they just did an average job, they deserve a tip. Uh, recently, you know, on, uh, on my vacation, we, uh, we tipped uh, decent amounts. There was this one guy at a Hard Rock Cafe. He was working there for uh, eight years. And he was really good. He was very attentive. He was a likable character and he got a good tip he was professional he was clean cut you know his uniform was tidy the food was good what I try to do is I try not to base a tip off of the food because you gotta think about it why punish the server you know the waiter or the waitress for something that's not not their problem you know why punish uh, the waiter or waitress when it's, you know, the person who created the food's fault. So, I say if it's bad food but good service, there's no need to punish the person who served the food for something that they didn't do. So that's not justifiable. If, however, it's bad food and they react in a bad manner, they say, you know, well, you say, oh, well, you know, uh, I ordered this burger, say, medium rare and it's burnt to a crisp, uh, could I please send it back? And they say no. Well, then that might detract some money. It's all about the service and the cleanliness of the establishment because usually it's the wait staff's obligation to also clean up and tidy up the place. However, food, I don't judge it off of. Tipping, I do not judge off of food. The most I've ever tipped was, uh, I'd say probably a good, you know, 70, 80 percent. Uh, I remember at this one pizza place, the service was excellent. Now, the least I've ever tipped was nothing. It was this one, also a mom and pop place, and they literally had the worst service I've ever seen in my life. The, the waitress was just, I don't have you know, polite words to describe it. it was just completely rude disrespectful irresponsible and uh, didn't deserve anything the food wasn't good either but I didn't base it off of that but, uh, we actually tipped I, I usually tip probably 15 percent most uh, average uh, sometimes I'll tip more uh, I remember we tipped 25 bucks at this one restaurant uh, in Maui, Hawaii, because it turns out that the uh, the waitress that we had is actually from pretty much almost the same same you know really county, almost same exact area uh, in the state as us. You know, so it was just an extreme coincidence. Uh, but also, even after even before we found that out, the service was great. Uh, so it was deserving of a tip. A good tip. Anyway. When you mentioned your dad, uh, this is a new letter. When you mentioned your dad, I had to see him. I was so disappointed you removed the video featuring him, but I had to find a picture. Found one. Sorry. And he is adorable. Are you familiar with David Byrne from Brian Eno's My Life in a Ghost, in a Bush of Ghosts? I think you might appreciate the genius of this work. Shall. I am a fan of Brian Eno. I have not checked that one out specifically, but I certainly will, and I'll, uh, I'll definitely see how that is. No doubt. 
I'm glad to hear you had a good time in Hawaii. I went on vacation myself, the same time you did, to the Great Smoky Mountains in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I had a great time. It's really, really great to see you back doing these new videos. I've been great looking forward to new VORWs and, of course, reviews. Well, I must say your VORW shows are my favorite. What was your favorite thing you did while away? Were there any funny or memorable, memorable moments? Anyway, I hope you are well and settled in from your trip. Also, I'm not entirely sure what state you are from, but if there is a Mullow Mushroom Pizza location near you, I'd love to see you review the pizza. I tried it recently on my trip, and I quite liked it. Talk to you later. Thank you for your kind words, as always. Well, my vacation had a lot of nice things. Really, just one bad thing, and that was that road to Hana, uh, which, believe me, I rode a lot in there. has everything from... A drug addict wearing a clown costume and hillbilly cannibals. You'll see. But I write a lot in there. I make it as this. I, I make I make you know the road to Hana and this uh, its inhabitants, might you say? I make it as this wasteland filled with hardcore stoners and hillbilly cannibals, and uh, it just plays out very interesting. <laughs> I had some fun with it. That's that's the truth. I really did, and it's not meant to offend anyone or anything. I just let my creative, I let the creativity flow on that one, and uh, I had a good time writing it. And I also uh, described the most filthy uh, rest area I've ever seen in my life. Now, what was excellent about the trip? There are actually two things. We on the big island now. That's uh, obviously the biggest island in the Hawaiian chain, hence the name. They don't lie to you and just say, oh, it's the big island, but it's actually the second smallest one. No, they don't, they don't do that. But on the big island, there's two very tall mountains uh, on them, on it. There's Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. Both of them are about 13,000 feet tall. And we took a day trip up to Mauna Kea went on a bus, we left at around 5 p.m., and we're at sea level then. We went up to 13,000 feet, we acclimated at around 9,000, had a dinner and whatever. And at 13,000 feet on the, pretty much the peak of the mountain there, and that's where there's a lot of observatories and you know, telescopes that observe the heavens. Uh, up there we got to watch the sunset, and I must say from 13,000 feet, gazing over the Pacific Ocean, above the patchy clouds and seeing the beautiful uh, colors. You know, there were some high altitude cirrus clouds so you could really see the <clears throat> the real colors of the sunset. You could see the orange, the pink, the red, all of that. And when I get the pictures, I think I'll show it in the next show. It was truly one of the most beautiful uh, things I've ever seen in my life. And uh, truly, it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, truly beautiful. You know, it, was, it was very scenic oriented. You know, you had some tourists who, when they go to Hawaii, gotta go swim with the sharks or swim with the dolphins or any of that stuff. Or go, go zip lining, that was another big one. But if you think of me as an individual, you know I'm not into that. And personally, I'd get a kick more of, say, something like that than just an adrenaline rush. Uh, so, truly, I think that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever done on a trip. Uh, other than that, I have a few other little stories to tell, which I think I'll <clears throat> share throughout the course of these upcoming VORW shows. But uh, there's certainly a lot, a lot to share, and I'll gradually get through it all. I don't know if I told you already, but uh, I bought two neckties in Hawaii. I'm wearing one right now as we speak. I'm wearing my white and oh, it's like a very light brown seersucker suit. It's the first time this year I've worn it. Uh, I'm breaking it out for the warmer weather. But I'm wearing that with a uh, freshly pressed uh, shirt with French cuffs and a nice collar. And with that I'm wearing a brand new tie which I bought in Hawaii. Uh, I hope you all like it. But it's a very nice one. It's a white color. Solid white background with almost little floral on it. Uh, 
but it, it's 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 not like a very thick floral pattern. It's just got a few flowers on it, but they're subtly colored, and it reminds me almost, in, in, for some reason, almost like a 1940s tie. Uh, but I really like it. It's made in Hawaii, and I bought that one, and it goes great with this seersucker suit. I wore it on the energy drink review, which will be up uh, maybe the same day this is uploaded, maybe a day after. We'll see. But uh, I think it's a great look. Uh, and we also bought another tie in Hawaii. It's a uh, pretty much a dark red one, like a maroon one, with just a little one shade lighter uh, red little almost palms, I think, on it, like palm trees on it. But it's very subtle. Like with the flowers, for instance, there's only like like four flowers on the whole tie. They're big, but they're subtle, and they're pretty much light colors. Like one's brown, another's like tan, green. It's just a very nice tie. You'll see it. You will see it. Moving on. On the most recent fan mail reading, began to read what I believe was my message, and then state that you've already done that one and skipped the next one. Well, it's most likely that you've already read my message. It was not addressed on the previous or any prior VORW. The message is below. I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, I do apologize on that. I do. I am sincere. You know, I always try to read every single fan mail message, but sometimes when I was back from the 12-day thing, I really couldn't remember where I left off, so... Let's reply to it now. Congrats on the recent fantastic episodes of VORW. I'll admit, the show where you played YouTube-approved music for the majority of the show had me a bit concerned about the future of the show's format, but alas, all is well. I was wondering if you, share, if you would share your thoughts on extraterrestrial life. What do you think the possibility of life existing on other planets... More specifically, intelligent life. Do you think such things are or have been monitored or interacted with our species at any point in time? Regards. That's an interesting topic, and I've never addressed it before, but I will now. Is there intelligent life in the vast universe? Possibly infinite. You know, I actually attended a speech, a seminar, if you will, a lecture, last year where the uh, scientist, the astronomer who was speaking, actually said that there's theories going around that the Big Bang, he believes that the Big Bang was what started, obviously there's many theories, it's never proven, but I believe it's the Big Bang uh, that created the universe, it was actually a localized event. Yeah, isn't that something? That the universe is actually infinite? If you would just think if that was true for a moment, infinite. Oh yeah, so what? If you really were to delve deep into that with your mind, it's nearly mind-blowing to think that if that is true, it goes on forever, in every direction. Or if you just believe it was just a big bang and it was just one event, you could really get philosophical and you can think, well, the big bang happened, so what was before that? So that's really philosophical if you want to think about it. And then you could think, well, if everything has a beginning, has to have an end. So what about the universe? So it's just little things like that, really philosophical stuff. You'll never see it happen, but just interesting to think about. Uh, extraterrestrial life, though, where were we? Well, I believe it does exist. Now, all this stuff about aliens is interesting, and if you think about it, you know, I'm not one of those paranoid UFO guys, or whatever. But I think there's life out there. I do, and I think it's just close-minded to say, you no, know, us humans, and you know, all the deer and all that stuff roaming around the earth, and all the animals here, we're the only things living in this whole universe. I find that a bit close-minded to say. Already on uh, Europa, I believe it was, the ice-covered moon, they're saying there's a possibility of somewhat temperate oceans buried beneath the layer, the layers of uh, ice, actually, on the surface. So, I mean, that actually is you know, something to... I think that's interesting. You know, the uh, Jupiter's moon, Europa... So even if that's the case, there's probably life in there, be it just microscopic, 
That could be extraterrestrial life if you want to call it that. But, oh yeah, no, I definitely think that there's life out there. With the universe as big as it is, there is intelligent life out there. Far more intelligent than humanity will ever be, I believe. They're out there somewhere. Chances are that the human race would never interact with them in eternity. But they're out there. And then I bet there's far planets out there that are just inhabited by nothing but slugs or some variety of that. And they're the dominant race on that planet. And I bet with all the planets out there in the universe, I bet there is a planet out there where slugs are the dominant race or the dominant species, might I say. There could be different races of slugs. But the dominant species of the planet. I think that's some food for thought. But yes, I do believe that there is life out there. And last, but not least, hello. I've watched your videos for a fair while now, and I've always liked seeing your fast food reviews. In your recent VOW 31, you said you have been listening to New Zealand radio. I live in New Zealand, and I, recommend, I recommend listening to Leeton Smith on News Talk ZB. He attracts a lot of listeners from New Zealand and around the world and generally talks about some good topics. It's talkback radio, so a good opportunity to listen to some lunatics. I also visited Hawaii this year. Interesting to hear your take on the place. Anyway, keep up the videos. And that was from Tom. I shall definitely, definitely check that out. Oh, I'm a big fan of your videos. Why don't you allow comments on them? I think many of your viewers would enjoy interacting with you, and thanks for the videos. Keep it up. I already responded to that. And this guy gave me a link to uh, a Reddit link uh, from a subreddit called Deep Into YouTube. Uh, but, yeah. That's where some views came from. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we got them. We got them all. We'll read some stuff from Reddit later, but uh, for now we're gonna get to the show. Okay. Yeah, everything's looking good. Well. What do you want? Got the book right over there. Got my story over there. I think I should just read you my story right now, and then if we have some time, I mean, we're 30 minutes in, but if I go for an hour, is it, really, is it gonna kill you? You know? I don't think so. How about we read the story? Okay? Hey, listen, don't, don't despair, don't be upset, do not fret. If you don't enjoy the story, you could simply shut this off. You have the power to leave this broadcast at any given time. I do not. I have to stand here and pace around and talk into the microphone and record this. Right. So I'm going to do it, you know, regardless. But I'm going to read the story. It's a shorter story that I wrote about the road to Hana in Hawaii. And, uh... I hope you enjoy it. I figure I'm, I figure I'm going to do that now and then get that covered and then it'll just be smooth sailing from now on where we'll just do uh, the history of the channel, okay? Hope you like it. It's a nice little break from the usual monotony. Uh, but I hope you do it. I've tried the best I could to, to write it, be descriptive. The story takes place in a, a car for the most part with three passengers. Now I wrote it from a unique point of view. I am not the narrator. The narrator is a front seat passenger. You have the driver and then you have myself in the back seat. Now the road to Hana, let's just describe the setting for a moment. The road to Hana is located on the Hawaiian island of Maui. The road to Hana is about 20 miles long it is from pretty much one of the most populated cities in Maui. It's a backcountry route. It goes through some very, very rural places in Hawaii and the, and the island of Maui. And its destination is Hana, which is a small fishing village, very remote, very low population. 
really not about where it's to, it's apparently the journey, right? Some have said in talking about other things and driving. So, and this road is about 20 miles in length. However, it could take up to an hour to two hours to drive. Because for about 10 miles of it, 10 to 15 miles, there are over 600 turns. That's right, 600 hairpin turns and single lane bridges. It goes through very, very dense forests, all sorts of environments and climates and all of that. 600 turns. Most people take the whole day to do this. We tried to do it in an hour. Another word of terminology that will be used in this story heavily is something called the shaka. What is the shaka? No, don't think like that. It's not that. The shaka is a hand motion where the thumb and the pinky finger, finger are extended outward with all the other fingers tucked in. Maybe I'll put a picture of this, maybe not, but you could look it up. And it's used by Hawaiians pretty much as every type of... It, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just used nowadays to just do it. Pretty much could mean hello, you know. Uh, sometimes drivers use it if they want to merge into another lane in Hawaii. They'll give the shock out the window. It's pretty much just a generic little hand motion. And finally, whatever thing is something called a lava tube. A lava tube is an underground structure uh, created by the flow of lava many years ago where the lava will actually cool and harden. It forms almost like it's almost like a cavern uh, which the lava once flowed through and then subsequently cooled. Without further ado, we read you my story. The Road to Hana, the Highway to Hell. We hope you enjoy. And if it doesn't turn out well, I apologize for wasting your time. Road to Hana, aka Highway to Hell. We set out from the airport with no food or water. The objective was to reach the sought after lava tubes. It started out uneventful even a little pleasant. That ended when the road became nothing but a series of hairpin turns, nauseating 180 degree back and forth crap. Add to that the fact that the two lane road frequently became a single lane, so you had to try and beat the person coming the other way. Did I mention we had no food or water? We did pass a cardboard hut, hung with filthy rags that called itself a smokehouse. They had some kind of meat for sale, but there was no sign of refrigeration, probably serving man flesh. All the inland waterfalls and pools are traps laid by the smoker people. The owner of the smokehouse was hairy and had on nothing but overalls with only one strap. He also had a gun. When he saw us coming the first time, he went inside his hut and threw the rags over the entrance. Then. He gestured with the gun for us to keep going. On the Hana Road, you have no choice but to keep going. Dying of thirst and stick to our stomachs, we continued. Trees towered overhead and leaned over the roadway. Sometimes near steep cliffs, we saw empty cars parked off the roadway. These must have belonged to the weak ones, who opted out by the fastest possible way. Hopefully, it wouldn't come to that for us. Turn after turn in the green-lit, claustrophobic labyrinth, sick, thirsty, and no longer hungry because we were so sick. After a while, we became aware that the driver was muttering something repeatedly, almost like a chant. What's he saying? groaned John, the poor backseat passenger. It sounds like he's saying... Java Grooves, you okay? Oh, he's talking about Hawaii's fi finest coffee, I guess. Java Grooves means he would like a cup, I answered, as if I had any idea what I was saying. Tubes! Tubes! The driver snarled, taking his eyes off the road and almost colliding head-on 
of a car on one of those single-lane bridges. He waved the shock at the driver as if it were a talisman, and then proceeded. Tubes, I asked. Like inner tubes for rafting? Lava tubes, you fool, he yelled, slamming his hands on the steering wheel. We need to find them. He chased the car in front of us off the road, again waving the shocker. Here, make yourself useful. The driver thrust the map into the back seat. There was silence for a short stretch, and then I heard a heart-wrenching cry of despair. I looked over to the back seat and looked at the headline John was pointing at. The best thing about the hotter road is at the end is the beginning. And now you get to drive it all over again. Enjoy. Oh, crap. Stop now. Turn around. Stop. We started yelling at the driver. He shook his head and went faster, almost clipping a group of tie-dye clad pedestrians. Twenty more minutes, he said, turning the steering wheel this way and that, flinging us about. Just twenty minutes. Twenty more minutes going forward just lengthens our trip back by twenty minutes. We sat in miserable silence. Aha! Our driver exclaimed. Halfway to Hana. I'll stop here and get water and food. He pulled into a dirt parking lot full of colorfully dressed people who might have been on drugs. Or maybe that's what happens if you stay on this road too long. Our driver staggered around and made his way to a counter that was manned by a guy in a rainbow rig wig with a clown nose. He began speaking urgently to the clown guy and gesticulating wildly, money-changed, and money-changed hands. Our driver returned to the car with three bottles of Hana 2O water and a small package wrapped in plastic that we looked at with alarm. Suspecting some sort of illicit drug, he opened the package and said, Here, it's coconut, and passed the pieces of room-temperature coconut that was just starting to yellow around the edges. After taking a nibble of the utterly tasteless coconut, we passed it back to the driver, who seemed annoyed. It's coconut! He snapped, as if it should mean something. We gathered all the coconut, he gathered all the coconut into his lap and began gnawing at it. He turned and directed his questioning to the back seat. So, where are the lava tubes, huh? Where are they? You have the map, and we're not moving. He went back to gnawing at the coconut. John looked at the map. They don't seem to be marked. Liar, the driver snarled, spraying flecks of coconut all over the dashboard. He waved the shaka at the clown guy, who leaped over the counter and bopped over to the car, immediately engulfing it in a cloud of patchouli. What's up, man? He stuck his head in the window as far as the wig would fit. The sight of the clown guy's head filling the car in the window would give me nightmares for days, and John had retreated behind the map. Can you tell us where the lava tubes are? Our driver asked. Lava tubes? Sure, man, no problem. Lava tubes, the clown guy said, nodding. Well, where are they? Our driver asked. Lava tubes, yeah, man. Uh, you have to get to the end of the road, man. And then you gotta walk around, you know? Our driver started closing the window while the clown guy's head was still inside the car. We ended up taking off his clown nose, which lay on the floor of the car, rolling listlessly back and forth. The clown guy was upset. You took my nose, man. That's not cool. He was hopping from foot to foot. Our driver waved the shaka and pulled out of the clown guy's nose on the floor. A little further on, John mentioned that he needed to clean his hands after that coconut. We expected another outburst from the driver. But he remained calm and ran another driver off the road. Here, he said, you can use this state wayside. It has public bathrooms. He pulled over and killed the engine. Now let's talk about this restroom. As soon as you approach, you are engulfed in a steamy miasma of rotten feces, ancient urine, rust, and vomit. It took on an almost solid form in the heat. The floor was covered in all manner of filth. 
Dark stains writhed in the insane lunatic patterns in the half-light. There were two urinals. The first was stained with what appeared to be blood of countless sacrifices. Inside the urinal was a large clump of brown hair, along with a multitude of cigarette butts, obviously the remains of an elaborate ritual to the Hana Death God. The second urinal was rusted out, and in its ghastly remains lay a large turd. There were three stalls, which were difficult to make out in the gloom. In the first stall, the door was stained and an unbearable odor emanated from the second two. The first stall was occupied by something living. Sounds of movement, accompanied by groaning, emanated through the dim room, echoing off the ceiling. There were no sinks, and the only water issued from a rusted spigot in the wall. The murky red liquid that issued from the spigot did not resemble water in the least. After cleaning up and after that ordeal was over, it was back to the car. It was at the same time that John, the driver, and I noticed what was embedded in the slice of coconut decorating the dashboard. A human tooth. Well, uh, there must be a reasonable explanation, the driver said, not touching the piece of coconut. At that very moment, couldn't have been planned better, a man in a skeleton mask and a grass skirt went skipping past the car, turning and waving the shaka as he went by. We noticed he was singing to himself in a high-pitched monotone, Lee! Lee Lee! Lee! Lee Lee! Our driver sat dumbstruck, not moving a muscle. John rolled down the window and threw the map, which caught the breeze, and drifted up. It blew down to the skeleton guy. He caught it, held it up to the sky, and dancing in a circle, crying, Lee! Lee Lee! He then ripped up the map and continued skipping down the road until he rounded a corner and was lost from sight. Uh, our driver said. Still not moving. Yeah, said John. I totally agree, I said. With no argument, no yelling, and pretty much no other words, we turned back. If we thought our driver had been reckless before, we had definitely thought wrong. Several cars actually drove up the slopes to avoid us, and countless walkers fled back to wherever they had come from. One bicycler tipped over after braking too hard. Cries of terror and outrage followed us, and over it all, from nowhere and everywhere, Lee! Lee Lee! We were approaching the smokehouse, when our driver slowed down and pulled into the tiny dirt lot that was filled with rusted-out cars and derelict motorcycles. What are you doing? John said in horror. No, we haven't stopped any who are authentically Hawaiian on this whole road, our driver said, killing the engine again. Yes, we've met some strange people, but this guy seems nice. Besides, I'm hungry. But he's armed, I pointed out. I'm sure it's for self-defense. Like I said, there's some strange people out here. Our driver got out of the car. We were going to stay in the car, but a man with a tattooed face and a loincloth began circling it and looking at us with t far too much interest. <clears throat> he was wearing a mongoose around his neck. A dead mongoose. We decided to get out of the car, after all. Everything was quiet, except for the sound of the dead mongoose guy sniffing at us. Our driver had reached the rag-covered cardboard shack. He stopped and said, Aloha? We heard the sound of a shotgun bolt being slammed into place. If you're those health department jokers, I suggest you leave while you can, a voice wheezed from behind the rags. Through holes in the cloth, we could see a pair of bloodshot eyes darting between, Adam, between all of us. No, we're just here for your food, our driver said. It looked so tasty when we drove by the first time. We just had to stop and try some. The guy threw aside the rags and was revealed in all his glory. He was covered in red hair everywhere, even on his back. He wore a pair of denim overalls and nothing else. The overalls 
the overalls exposed a large part of his uh, flank and were exposed and were strung with only one button his feet his feet were bare and cracked with mud and who knows what else he spit on a palm and rubbed it into his hand with the other then he offered his disease-ridden hand to our driver who shook happily his spit was green john whispered i saw i replied you come to eat the one strap guy ch crawled sure make yourselves at home get comfortable here's some stumps to sit on the stumps were damp moldy and had what appeared to be a colony of large ants living in them we opted to stand, except for our driver who was promptly bitten, and he decided to stand also. He led us behind some trees, pointed and said, My pantry! Hanging from the branches were indeterminable pieces of meat crawling with flies. On the islands, flies are used as a natural tenderizer, the one strap guy said. The driver nodded enthusiastically. That's fascinating. One of the pieces of meat was a large bird that looked strangely familiar. Isn't that a nene? I asked. They're endangered. Nene's ain't endangered, the one strap guy laughed. That's all government lies. Why, you can't walk three feet, feet without running into a nene. What other meats do you have? asked our driver. Oh, well, you know, whatever comes along. He scratched an armpit, sniffed his hand, and laughed. Once they're butchered, you can't tell man from beast. What? John asked. What do you mean, man from beast? What do you mean? What do I mean? The one strap guy growled. You look like a government type anyway. So, what do you have available for lunch? Asked our driver. We got lots of good stuff, the one strap guy said, gesturing at several piles of smoking flesh. Just take your pick and start eating. I think I'll try some of this, our driver reacted the smallish hunk of pinkish gray meat. Okay, that'll be twenty dollars cash, one strap said. Our driver forked over the cash and asked about the plates, utensils, and salt. This sent one strap into gales of laughter. When he was able to speak, he said, In a natural setting, you should eat naturally, with your hands. Your arm makes a great napkin. And don't worry about seasoning. This meat's seasoned with the earth's best. The earth's best what? John whispered. Okay, well, here goes. Our driver intrepidly took a bite. He chewed once, and then stopped. What do you think? One strap asked. Our driver discreetly spit out the mouthful and asked, What kind of meat is this? Darned if I know. Like I said, once they're butchered, you can't tell man from beast. One strap grinned, a toothy greenish smile. Our driver put down the meat and gestured for us to go to the car, looked at one strap and said, Mahalo, as cheerfully as he could manage. Then he walked quickly back to the car, completely ignoring the guy in the loincloth who was sniffing the tires as if he'd urinated on them. Leaving so soon? One strap laughed. Oh well, you know what they say in the islands. So long, suckers. He then turned his back and undid the other overall strap, treating us to a very full, very hairy moon. We peeled out before he turned around. Whose stupid idea was this? Our driver demanded over. Already back to his shaka waving, hyper aggressive driving. John and I looked at each other all looked at each other. Yours, we said in unison. Figures you'd gang up on me. I need to get that taste of whatever I ate out of my mouth. Hand me my water bottle. I handed him the bottle before I realized that the clown guy's red rubber nose was on top of the bottle, covering the cap. Our driver looked as if he had seen a live snake. We have to get rid of that thing. But I'm not going past that smokehouse again to return it. I have an idea, I said. Drive a little further and then stop. 
Trust me on this. Neither our driver nor John looked convinced. When the car stopped, I got out, stood in the middle of the road, and in a high-pitched monotone cried, Lee! Lee Lee! Lee! Lee Lee! Why are you calling that thing? John asked. The driver nodded in agreement. Wait, I said. Sure enough, the skeleton guy appeared, preceded by Lee, Lee Lee's. He stopped, executed a perfect pirouette, and looked at me, head cocked. Ah, we need to give this nose back to its owner at halfway to Hana. You going that way any time? The skeleton guy hooted once, but made no move to take the nose. Instead, he began studying the treetops and softly singing, Lee, Lee, Lee. We have something for you as payment, I said. He stopped singing and looked at me, inquisitively. It's coconut, but not only that, it has a tooth in it, a human tooth, and to me it looks like you're missing one. In silence, the skeleton guy grabbed the coconut, turning it his this way and that, and carefully pulled out the tooth. He examined it, hooted it again, and stuck it in the empty spot in his skull mask. Lee! Lee Lee! He examined, he exclaimed joyfully. He held out his hand, and I gave him the nose, which he stuck on his face. It looked really weird, but think where we were. I got back in the car. Our driver waved the shock at the skeleton guy, who returned the gesture. Then we turned and got the hell out. That was a short story entitled Road to Hana, aka Highways of Hell. I'm just pitching in here, uh, following this story. This is a, a day later, but uh, after reviewing the recording, I just wanted to uh, pitch in an additional little thing. You may have been wondering why uh, I described in the story the bathroom so in-depth. You know, was that necessary? The reason I did that was because it was true. Uh, you know, a lot of the story is obviously fictionalized, uh, you know, but the thing about the coconut, you know, it did make my hands sticky, and I wasn't willing to really dump the water bottle on my hands in the car, uh, so conveniently we pulled up at this public bathroom, I was just gonna wash the, whatever residue <laughs> might have been on that coconut, uh, off my hands, uh, so I just described the bathroom accurately, that is what it was actually like, and uh, it was the most disgusting thing I've ever, ever witnessed, really. Written by yours truly. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you did enjoy the story. If you have any questions or comments regarding it or this show, feel free to send us a message. I understand that the YouTube message system is a bit weird nowadays, but I have found out that it works very similar to the message system previous. Uh, although it's... You know, I don't like to delete any messages, uh, so it's becoming quite cluttered quite fast, but oh well, keep sending them. Comments, questions, support, whatever, feel free to send them. I will gladly respond at the beginning of each and every VORW show. With that being said, I thank you for listening. Our next show, being that now we've read this story, which I do hope you enjoy, I had a fun time writing it, and I hope you had a fun time reading, uh, reading or listening to it, I suppose, in this, in this case. With that being said, though, uh, hope you enjoyed this show. Next show, aside from the usual stuff, we'll continue. Uh, we'll continue to describe the history of my channel. This time from probably June or May of 2012 to probably early 2013, maybe February or January of 2013, after the pizza review went viral, if you will. With that being said, I thank you all for listening, as I do every show, and I will see you next time, be it in a review or a VORW show. I will see you then, and until then, I wish you the very best. This is the Voice of the Report of the Week, signing off. <laughs>